all living organisms, whether plants, animals or microorganisms, contain innumerable organic compounds or biomolecules in a certain concentration. This concentration is expressed as moles per cell or moles per liter. Interestingly, biomolecules constantly break up and are remade, or in other words, they have a turnover. They change into other biomolecules or are made from other biomolecules due to constant chemical reactions in living beings. The entire set of biochemical reactions that takes place in living organisms and helps them maintain life is known as metabolism. Metabolism is important to living beings to maintain their structures, growth and reproduction and helps them respond to their environments. However, metabolic reactions lead to the transformation of biomolecules. For example, the decarboxylation of histidine gives histamine. Similarly, the hydrolysis of a glycosidic bond in sucrose yields glucose and fructose. Most of these reactions do not occur in isolation and are usually linked to other reactions. In fact, the series of linked chemical reactions that transforms biomolecules is called metabolic pathways. These pathways take a specific path and include specific biomolecules. They can be either linear, as in the process of glycolysis, or circular, as in the Krebs cycle. Metabolic pathways can be divided into two categories. Anabolic pathways and catabolic pathways. Anabolic or biosynthetic pathways lead to more complex structures from a simple one. For example, the process of glycogenesis, which involves the biosynthesis of glycogen from glucose. In other words, glucose molecules are added to chains of glycogen for storage. On the other hand, catabolic pathways lead to a simple structure from a complex one. They involve degradation and also lead to a release of energy. For example, the process of glycogenolysis, which leads to the breakdown of glycogen to glucose. The energy released during degradation is trapped by living organisms and stored as chemical bonds. Later, this bond energy is utilized for biosynthetic, osmotic and mechanical work whenever the need arises. The most important biomolecule that contains energy in its chemical bonds is adenosine triphosphate or ATP. When bonds of ATP break, a lot of energy is released. ATP also transports chemical energy within cells for metabolism. All the chemical reactions associated with metabolic pathways are catalyzed reactions. Metabolic pathways can be compared to automobile traffic, where they have traffic junctions when they meet and cross each other. Just like automobile traffic, the flow of metabolites through these pathways is definite and takes place in a specific direction. This flow of metabolites is also called the dynamic state of body constituents. As you have studied, Thousands of metabolites or biomolecules are present in living organisms. Each of these biomolecules has a definite concentration. For example, the blood concentration of glucose in a normal healthy individual is 4.5 to 5.0 millimolars, while that of hormones is measured in nanograms and milliliters. Moreover, these biomolecules are constantly a part of the metabolic process. Any chemical or physical process moves naturally to equilibrium. However, systems at equilibrium cannot perform work. Therefore, the living state is a steady state 
or a non-equilibrium state, which is essential for living organisms to be able to work constantly. The living state or non-equilibrium state is attained by energy input through metabolism. Hence, metabolism and the living state are synonymous and one cannot exist in the absence of the other. Did you know that cheese is produced with the help of rennet, which is a natural complex of many enzymes? Enzymes act as biological catalysts in a living system and change the rate of reactions without themselves getting altered. While most enzymes are proteins, some nucleic acids also behave like enzymes. These nucleic acids are called ribozymes. Just as with proteins, enzymes have a primary, secondary and tertiary structure. While the primary structure is an amino acid sequence, the tertiary structure folds and crisscrosses on itself, creating many crevices or pockets. One of these pockets is called the active site. A substrate fits into this active site of the enzyme and enables it to catalyze reactions at a high rate. While enzymes catalyze chemical reactions, they are very different from inorganic catalysts. Inorganic catalysts such as platinum and nickel work effectively at high temperatures and under high pressure, while enzymes are damaged at temperatures above 40 degrees centigrade. However, some enzymes such as thermolysin can be isolated from thermophilic organisms that live in high temperature environments like sulfur springs. These enzymes retain their catalytic power even at temperatures as high as 80 to 90 degrees centigrade. To understand the working of enzymes, we'll begin by learning more about chemical reactions. Chemical compounds undergo physical and chemical changes. When a compound changes shape without breaking its existing bonds, it is said to be a physical change. For example, ice melting to form water. On the other hand, when the bonds in a compound are broken and new bonds are formed during transformation, it is called a chemical reaction. The rate of a reaction is defined as the amount of a product formed per unit time. It can be expressed as delta P upon delta T. Various factors such as temperature and pressure influence the rate of reaction. This rate generally doubles or decreases by half for every 10 degree change in temperature in either direction. For example, consider that a particular reaction is taking place at 5 degrees with the rate of reaction as one unit. When the temperature is increased by 10 degrees, the reaction rate will double to two units. Similarly, if the temperature is decreased by 10 degrees, the reaction rate will become half. A catalyst greatly influences the rate of a reaction. Hence, the rate of enzyme-catalyzed reactions is significantly higher than uncatalyzed reactions. Consider the example of a reaction where carbon dioxide and water react to form carbonic acid. In the absence of any enzyme, 200 molecules of carbonic acid are formed in an hour. However, when the enzyme carbonic anhydrase is used, 600,000 molecules of carbonic acid are formed every second. Hence, the carbonic anhydrase enzyme accelerates the reaction 10 million times. There are numerous types of enzymes and each of them 
catalyzes a unique chemical and metabolic reaction. There are also multi-step reactions where each step is catalyzed by a single or multiple enzymes. For example, glucose is converted into pyruvic acid through 10 different enzyme catalyzed metabolic reactions. Pyruvic acid yields different types of end products during various pathways. During aerobic respiration, it forms acetyl COA and carbon dioxide in the presence of the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. While during anaerobic respiration in the muscles, in the presence of the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, pyruvic acid leads to the formation of lactic acid. On anaerobic respiration in yeast, the same pyruvic acid leads to alcoholic fermentation in the presence of the enzyme pyruvic decarboxylase. Therefore, metabolic pathways catalyzed by enzymes yield different types of metabolic end products under different conditions. Enzymes are three-dimensional protein structures with an active site. They convert a chemical or a substrate, denoted as S, into a product or P. One or more products can be formed from a single or many substrates. Enzymes help in catalyzing the reactions, but they do not participate in the reaction themselves. In other words, at the end of any reaction, the enzyme remains unaltered and is ready to be used by another molecule. The multi-step reaction mechanism involving enzymes as catalysts is called the catalytic cycle. We shall now study the steps in this cycle. First, the substrate S binds to the active site of the enzyme and fits itself inside a given cleft or pocket. In the second step, the binding of the substrate forces the enzyme to change its shape and fit more tightly around the substrate. This leads to the formation of a highly reactive enzyme substrate complex or ES complex. This complex is short-lived due to its instability, but it is extremely important for catalysis. These temporarily formed complexes are also known as transition state structures. In the third step, the active site of the enzyme breaks or forms chemical bonds and a new enzyme product complex or EP complex is formed. This EP complex is also unstable. Finally, in the fourth step, the structure of the substrate is transformed into the structure of the products. During the enzyme action, there can be many temporary, unstable structural states between the stable substrate and the product. For example, ES and EP complexes. These states are also known as altered structural states. Stability refers to the energy status of the molecule or the structure. In other words, stable structures can exist in nature without any uptake or release of energy. For example, S and P have a low energy status and are stable, whereas ES and EP complexes with a high energy status are unstable. This is a graph which shows how enzymes lower the activation energy during reactions, thereby increasing the rate of reaction. Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required for the chemical reaction to take place. In other words, 
it is the minimum amount of energy required by the substrates to form products. The y-axis represents the potential energy content, while the x-axis represents the formation of products via complex structures. Notice that there is an energy level difference between S and P. If P is at a lower level than S, it implies an exothermic reaction releasing heat energy. In other words, an external supply of heat energy is not required during this reaction to form a product. However, whether an exothermic or an endothermic reaction, the S has to go through a much higher energy state or transition state. In the graph, the red curve indicates that in the absence of an enzyme, the activation energy for a reaction is high. On the other hand, the pink curve shows that in the presence of an enzyme, the activation energy gets lowered, due to which the substrate transforms into a product quicker. Therefore, enzymes reduce the activation energy barrier by making the transition from S to P easier. In this way, enzymes bring about chemical and metabolic conversions at a high rate. Enzymes are mostly proteins and they increase the rate of chemical reactions. Just like proteins, enzymes also have a primary, secondary and tertiary structure. A change in a few factors can affect the activity of enzymes and can alter the tertiary structure of the protein. These factors include temperature, pH, change in substrate concentration, or the binding of specific chemicals that regulate the activity of enzymes. Let's take a look at each of these factors. Temperature and the pH factor affect the enzyme activity immensely. Typically, Enzymes function in a narrow range of temperature and pH. While low temperature preserves the enzyme when it is in a temporarily inactive state, high temperature destroys the activity of enzymes as the proteins get denatured by heat. In other words, the tertiary structure of proteins is destroyed and they become functionally inactive. Every enzyme demonstrates its highest activity at a particular pH level and temperature, which are called optimum pH and optimum temperature respectively. These following graphs depict the impact of change in pH and temperature on enzyme activity. As shown by the graphs, Enzyme activity increases steadily with an increase in pH and temperature up to the optimum pH and optimum temperature. Enzyme activity is the highest at this point. Thereafter, with an increase in pH and temperature, enzyme activity decreases as they get denatured and are not available for catalyzing reactions. Notice that enzyme activity is also low below the optimum value. Change in substrate concentration is the second factor impacting enzymatic activity. Here's a graph which shows enzyme velocity at many different concentrations of substrate. If the substrate concentration increases, initially, the velocity of enzymatic reaction rises. In the final stage, the reaction reaches a maximum velocity or Vmax. This velocity does not rise any further, even if there is an increase in the concentration of the substrate. 
The reason is that at Vmax, enzyme molecules are less than substrate molecules. After the saturation of these molecules, there are no free enzyme molecules that can bind with the extra substrate molecules. The third factor that shuts off enzyme activity is the binding of a certain chemical. This process is called inhibition and the chemical that induces it is called an inhibitor. For example, malonate is a competitive inhibitor of succinate which gets converted to fumarate in the presence of succinic dehydrogenase. Sometimes the molecular structure of the inhibitor closely resembles that of a substrate. Such an inhibitor is known as a competitive inhibitor and it impacts the activity of the enzyme. Since this inhibitor is structurally similar to the substrate, it competes with the substrate for the substrate binding site of the enzyme. As a result, the substrate cannot bind and enzyme action is reduced. For example, penicillin binds at the active site and inhibits the transpeptidase enzyme that cross-links the peptidoglycan strand to form the bacterial cell wall. This competitive inhibition is used to control bacterial pathogens. Thus, enzyme activity depends on physical factors such as temperature and pH and the chemical surroundings such as substrate concentration and the binding of specific chemicals. Enzymes play a significant role by helping the various processes in a biological cell to take place at a significant rate. Scientists have discovered and studied numerous enzymes. Depending on the types of reactions they catalyze, enzymes have been divided into six classes, namely oxidoreductases or dehydrogenases, transferases, hydrolases, lyases, isomerases, and ligases. Each of these classes is further divided into four to thirteen subclasses named by a four-digit number or EC number. In an EC number, for example, A, B, C, D, A will denote the class, B, the subclass, C, the sub-subclass, while D will denote the sub-sub-subclass. Oxidoreductases or dehydrogenases are enzymes that catalyze the transfer of electrons and hydrogen ions from one molecule called the reductant to another molecule or the oxidant. Here, the reductant is the electron donor while the oxidant is the electron acceptor. An example of an oxidoreductase enzyme is lactic dehydrogenase, which converts pyruvic acid into lactic acid and vice versa. The second class of enzymes is transferases. These enzymes catalyze the transfer of a functional group G, other than hydrogen, between the two substrates S and S prime. For example, the enzyme transmenase transfers the amino group from alanine to oxaloacetic acid, forming pyruvic acid and aspartic acid. The third class of enzymes or hydrolases catalyzes the hydrolysis of bonds such as ester, ether, peptide, glycoside, carbon-carbon bonds, halide bonds, 
or phosphorus and nitrogen bonds. For example, the hydrolysis of glycosidic bonds in sucrose by sacrase leads to the formation of glucose and fructose. Lyases comprise the fourth class of enzymes that catalyze the removal of bonds by mechanisms other than hydrolysis and oxidation. Lyases use mechanisms such as forming double bonds or a new ring structure for catalysis. An example is aldolases, which cleaves the aldol groups in fructose 1,6-biphosphate and forms dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The fifth class of enzymes called Isomerases catalyzes the interconversion of optical, positional, and geometric isomers. For example, during glycolysis, phosphohexose isomerase catalyzes the conversion of glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 6 phosphate. Ligases form the sixth class of enzymes. They catalyze the linking together of two compounds. For example, the joining of carbon with oxygen, carbon with sulfur, carbon with nitrogen, and phosphate with oxygen bonds is catalyzed by ligases. As you know, enzymes are three-dimensional protein structures joined by polypeptide chains. However, sometimes non-protein chemical compounds also bind to the enzyme and make it catalytically active. These chemical compounds are called cofactors, while the protein part of such enzymes is known as apoenzyme. There are three kinds of cofactors, prosthetic groups, coenzymes, and metal ions. Prosthetic groups are organic compounds that are tightly bound to the apoenzyme. For example, in the enzyme complex succinate dehydrogenase, FAD of flavin adenine is a prosthetic group that oxidizes succinate to fumarate in the eighth step of the citric acid cycle. Coenzymes are also organic compounds which get bound to apoenzymes for a brief period during catalysis. In fact, coenzymes act as cofactors in a number of different enzymatic reactions. Common examples of coenzymes are NAD or nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, and coenzyme A. The third type of cofactors is metal ions. They are required by enzymes to form coordination bonds with side chains at the active site and one or more coordination bond with the substrate. For example, magnesium is a cofactor for glucose 6-phosphatase and manganese is a cofactor for arginase. Some commonly occurring metal ions are cobalt, manganese, zinc and copper. A cofactor is very crucial for the catalytic activity of the enzyme. If the cofactor is removed, the enzyme loses its ability to perform catalysis. Therefore, the classification of enzymes provides information about reactions carried out by different enzymes.